name right. of the tape, please? Ed Kinback, yeah. Start with Erica, or what, where you're at with that yes, well, the um, the investigation surrounding the death of Erica Lydia Liddy continues. Now, we've established from the course of inquiries that um, we've got two separate bodies of information. One that she was seen um, on the Monday evening uh, of her of her death um, at about 9:30 p.m. in the Mirabal area. In fact, she. A family member interacted with her and spoke to her, and um, at that stage she was with a group of younger females in the park that is bordered by Lang, by um, Long and Shang Street. Now, um, what we wish to do is identify that particular group of young women she was with. Um, now, but, but significantly, there was a um, a male with this group who we also also wish to identify. This interview individual is a light-skinned um, Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander male um, and he has dreadlocks. Now he also is believed to be linked to a green 91 to 93 Commodore sedan um, which information suggests Erica may have been associated with a number of occasions prior to that date. So what we're interested in doing is identifying the group of women and uh, certainly identifying the, the, the male and the potential owner of the, of the green Commodore. Um, the Commodore is, a, is an older style vehicle that's certainly in relatively poor condition um, and it should be reasonably well known to the people in the Mirabal community. Um, albeit, uh, to date with the door knocks, we have not been able to sub sub substantiate that uh, Erica was in fact with that group or indeed with anyone with a green car, so we're seeking community assistance to identify that particular group she was interacting with and um, the owner of the vehicle. He may be able to assist us with the investigation. Has the person who tipped off police come forward at all? Oh well, yes, it was a family member who spoke spoke with her there and, um, and provided us with the information um, that she did in fact see her on the Monday night. Now she was found at 1.30am on the Tuesday, so obviously we've you know, relatively close to the period of time. It, you know, we've only got a four hour gap between when she was in Mirabil and when she was ultimately found on Camaronga Road. Um, so obviously it's a significant part of the investigation. Now also additionally, we have um, spoken to a person who in fact um, was with Erica on, on the Sunday evening, the night prior, and he, he dropped her in, into the city area at about 6 p.m. On Sunday night. Now he dropped her in the area of the Spence Sheridan Street intersections. So again, it appears that she's in that area, and we would like anyone who may have interacted her with interacted with Eric or may have some inf information in regard to her whereabouts Is to uh, let us know. Clear of what actually um, <coughs> caused her injuries? No, um, the it's 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 the nature of a, a, a stab type injury. Um, but that's what we can really say. The instrument is is possibly, you know, very thin. Um, you know, it, it's it's un it's unclear specifically what has caused the injury or how it has been inflicted. You know? So there's more of a wound rather than a blow. Is that what you're trying to say? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Right. Yeah. What about the bloke who phoned in, finding her at the bus shop? Uh, Stop. Have you no, that? no, that, in, that individual we still wish to identify. Um, we are continuing our efforts to try to identify him. In fact, uh, today we've conducted a, a further door knock in the, in the area um, based on some information that he may be a resident of Old Smithfield Road. Um, however, that has not been successful. Uh, we, again, we continue our requests for that individual to come forward and um, advise us of what they can tell us in regard to this, inc this incident. You know. How's the family going? Oh look, the, the family's okay. Um, a, a, a number of staff will be going to Cohen um, in, the, in the relatively near future. The, the funeral, as I understand, is this Friday. And um, obviously there will be a significant family gathering in Cohen and um, investigators will be attending to speak with family members to see what further information we can get. Do you have any idea who the girls might have been that they were with? No, that's no. At the moment, we wish to identify that group of 
girls, we have conducted extensive inquiries in the in the Mirabul suburb, in particularly along Long and Chang Street, and have not been able to identify. So there were people she was well known to be friends with. No, Erica tended to move between groups, and um, that's one of the difficulties of this investigation. She didn't have a specific tight group of friends. She tended to move between groups of people. How cooperative so. are um, your friends, family and associates? Oh, look, you? everyone is cooperating as best they can with the investigation. Um, certainly, you know, we've spoken to a large number of people, but it, it's simply that, you know, we are dealing with someone who did move loosely between groups of people and um, and being relatively new to Cairns, she didn't have a solid friends network who really could provide can provide us with that normal background that someone may be able to speak about their close friends and their close associates. That isn't the situation in this instance. And this man, hmm. um, why is he important to the investigation? Was he possibly a boyfriend? No, look, we, we don't know. Um, all, all we do know is that there is information that has been cropping up through the investigation of Erica potentially being in this green, in a Green Commodore um, and that the information we've got is that a Green Commodore was in the environs of this group and there was a male with the group. So obviously it's a potentially significant bit of information that we'd like to explore. Mm. Is it too hard to tell or could this have just been an accident that got out of hand um, or is it something that you might Well look, that's the, the, the purpose of this investigation to establish what the circumstances are. Um, you know, we've got an open mind in regard to that. The injury is unusual um, and and it's not associated with any other injuries. So there could be a range of explanations for it. Um, but certainly the, the whole nature of this investigation, the whole c circumstances, is inherently suspicious and it's certainly being treated um, as a murder investigation. And um, what, what unfolds is to, you know, as, as there's the mystery is effectively solved as to how this injury may have been inflicted, well, we've got to wait and see. The police said mm. some weeks ago that they didn't believe it was weapons um, that inflicted this injury. Is that still the case? Well, we simply, we simply don't know. We don't know how this injury has occurred. You know, It's, it's, it's an unusual injury. Um, you said mm. before that violence is something that sometimes happens when you live the lifestyle that Erica did. Mm. Do you think it's more likely that it was someone that she did associate with that if, if it was, as you suspect, an assault that led to a murder, um, do you think it's someone that she's more likely to already have known? Oh, look, it's possible. Um, we simply don't don't know. Um, it's, simply, it's someone that she could have met that evening. Um, or alternatively, it could be someone who she was has been associated with, for example, a, a person associated with the Green Commodore, um, you know, is obviously a person of interest. Um, but it's a speculation until you know, the full knowledge of, of her movements on that night are established. Um, yeah, really, we are in a bit of a holding pattern pending that information coming in. Yeah. Do you want to go on?